something to praise him this morning. Yeah. I got something to thank him for. Yeah. He gave me another day All right. to lift him and praise him and thank him yeah. for being in my life. Amen. And on top of that, yeah. he bring some more blessings into the kingdom. Yeah. Amen. You know, yeah. we got a lot to be thankful for. Amen. Because we're coming to a time where not many people want to give themselves to the Lord. Amen. Most people are caught up in giving themselves to the world. But I thank God today that Jesus sent the Holy Ghost thousands of years ago. And he's still doing his job. Amen. Touching people's hearts. Yes, blessing people. Bless letting them know that God is real. And that he wants to come into their not lives. He said, I stand knocking at the door. If any man let me in, I'll come in and I'll suck with them. I'll come in and I'll give them a life that their minds can never imagine. I'll bless them exceedingly, abundantly above. Oh, they can ask the thing. But you got to come to me. And you got to lay down your life. And you got to trust me. And it all started with the baptism. I want everybody to just think about how it was, all of us that have been in the Lord for a while, how it was when you got baptized. How God showed himself in your life that day. And how God blessed you and helped you through all those things. And we're just going to get started. And today is a little different day than normally. Normally we have testimonies where everybody testifies. You know, whoever the Lord lays, whoever by the Spirit is led to testify, tells about what God has done for them. Today we're going to ask you to hold them. Until next week, Lord willing. Okay, I, somebody, somebody said, I don't want to hold it. But we, 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 we might have a chance to put it in there. So we're going we're gonna to let God have his way. But see, he always makes a way. So but we, what we want to do now, and we ask everybody please be patient. What we want to do now, we want Brother David to open us up with a word of prayer. And also, whatever the Lord laid on his heart, to talk about the baptism. Amen, Brother David. Praise the Lord. Go ahead.
Amen. Let's give him some praise. Let's give him some good thanks, too. Thank God for Jesus. Took, taking us to the world. Brought forth, you know, God sent a Savior. Somebody that can come into our lives and do what no one else can do. And it started with the baptism. And I want you to, and you don't really have to follow me today in your Bibles, but if you want to, you can. But I'm going to go to Mark, first chapter. First of all, let's just bow our heads in the word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you thanking you and praising you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace, Lord. Thanking you that you look down upon mankind, Lord, and you sent your precious Holy Ghost, Lord, to fertilize the seed of faith, Lord. Bring us into the realization that you are God and you want to dwell with us and live with us, lead us and guide us, protect us and provide for us, and deliver us and keep us in every situation we might be in. Father God, we thank you so much that your spirit is, has the power to deliver us from whatever we might be bound in. You have the power to heal the broken heart, the cast down, the destroyed. You can restore us no matter what, what situation we might be in. And you can bless us exceedingly abundantly above all we ask that you. Lord, we ask that you might put down all flesh, that your spirit might come forth for your glory, Lord. The flesh in me and the flesh in each and every individual online, in the church, and in the world. Lord, we ask and we thank you for all that you're doing. We ask all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Let everybody say amen. 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 Let's give him a hand clap. Let's give him some praise. Let's give him some thanksgiving. Coming into our lives and doing that, what nobody else could do. And we have Mark, St. Mark, the first chapter. He says, in the beginning, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You know, the gospel is the good news that God sent to mankind. He sent Jesus to tell us that there's another way of life and living through him. As it is written in the prophets, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord and make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for remission of sins. You know, when the Lord touches our hearts and our minds and gives us the realization that we all are sinners and have come short of the glory of God, it's a great day in heaven because every angel rejoices and thanks God for redeeming another soul and ushering, beginning to bring that soul into the realization that Jesus has a kingdom for you down here that will give you peace, love, and joy. And I know everybody in here agree there ain't no peace, love, and joy down here in this world because it's all H-E-double-L -L going on out there. And, and I just want to let you know, they got a man over in Russia. He got an itchy finger. And you know what? It ain't no telling if he might push that button. And guess what? Every soul on this planet, life is going to change in an instant. In an instant. So it's time. If you put it off, if you haven't thought about it, and you know that you have a soul in this body, time. To let turn that soul over to Jesus. To let him do what only he can do. Let's go to Acts, first chapter. But we had some people that did it before that, before us. You know, and they left a record of what God can do and what he will do. And most of all, what he asked us to trust him to do in our lives. That's Acts, the first chapter, the fourth. And we're going to start at the fourth verse. And being assembled together with them, 
commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise the Father of the Father, which he said, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. God has not stopped pouring out his Holy Ghost. And through Jesus, he will pour it out in your life. Just be looking for it and trust in it. Hold on to the things that Jesus gives you. Because see, when Jesus said, what I give unto you, let no man, my joy. He won't give you joy. He's the only one that can give you joy. My joy, let no man take that which I have given unto you. Let's go to Acts, right next page, second chapter. I'm going to start at the 29th verse. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David that is both dead and buried, and his sepulture is with us unto this day. King David was a man after God's own heart. God loved David. And I'll tell you why God loved David. God loved David because he was a repentant man. He had a contrite heart. In other words, when God, when he realized what he had done, he said to God, Lord, against thee, only thee, thee have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. He wanted to get forgiveness from God after he realized. Because you know what? We all trapped in flesh. And we all are guided by our flesh until the spirit of God comes into our life that has power to deliver us and help us through the different situations that we're in. And, and verse 30, therefore being a prophet, knowing that God had sworn with it an oath to him that the fruits of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this, therefore spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, where we all are witnesses. And I think we got some witnesses in this house that he is real and he can change your life. Therefore, being by the right hand of God, exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which you now see and hear. For David has not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. One of the blessings that Jesus had. And he's willing to give into your life. He said, I will make your enemies your footstool. You know, you, you can lay down your arms when, when Jesus has wrapped his arms around you. You can give up fighting for yourself because Jesus will fight for you. And you'll see his spirit move all around you and be a blessing to all those that are around you by doing what only he can do. Therefore, let us all in the house of Israel know surely that God has made the same Jesus. You have crucified both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts, and they said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus, for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you and your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words he did testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. The only way you're going to escape what's going on out there is through Jesus Christ. Let's go uh, to 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one spirit all are baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, we have all been made to drink in one spirit. You know, they got all these different denominations out here. And all these different people that saying that they're, they're saved. They're, they're the true ones of the Lord. But, you know, Jesus only has one body. And he is the head. And through his word, he wants us to trust in it and believe in it and let him have his way in each and every one of our lives. Let's go to Matthew 28. Matthew 28. Matthew, the 28th chapter. I'm going to start at the 16th verse. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. 
you know, you will start to hear instructions from the Holy Ghost. He will give you strength to whatever environment that you might be in to be able to say no to the devil, to the flesh, and to all the things that are warring around you, trying to make you act and do like they are. And you'll find out in time that this spirit will have the power to keep you from a lot of sorrows and a lot of sadness that a lot of people have to go through. So let your ears be hearkened. Listen. You already know his voice because you hear. Can't no man come to Jesus except but by the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is already talking to you because you know what he told you to do. Give your life to Jesus. And just watch how he blesses your life and everyone around you. Jesus got that power to bless everyone around you with the love that only he has. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Always got some doubters in the house. But that's all right. Because see, Jesus know how to convince doubters. I'm a witness. I left the church for 16 years. I wasn't thinking about coming back to this church. Had a whole kinds of things, and that's another story I ain't gonna go into. But you know, but God, but God, but God, who is rich in mercy, had a pastor. I said, I knew you was coming back. I was just sitting around waiting for you. You know what? He just ministered the gospel of Jesus right into my heart. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in heaven and where else? He got all power. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Praise God. Let's go to Galatians. 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 I want to go to Galatians, the third chapter. Third chapter, and I want to start at the 26th verse. For ye all are children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Every one of you are children of God by faith. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female. You all are one in Christ. And if ye be one in Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Galatians. I want to go to Galatians. Okay. We'll be all right. Galatians 2.12. Buried with him in the baptism, wherein ye are also risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead. A new operation is started and continuing in your lives. The operation of faith in Jesus Christ. In Romans 6. chapter. And I want to start at the first verse. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound? God forbid. Well, how shall we that are dead to sin 
The baptism symbolizes the dying of the flesh and the birth and resurrection of his spirit. How shall we that are dead to sin live any so long? Know ye not that so many of us that were baptized into Christ were baptized unto his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of God, even so we should walk in newness of life. And I got, I can tell you, it's, it is a newness of life available for you. Just keep trusting him for it. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Only way to be free from sin is to die in the Lord and be raised up in him, in, in his spirit, and still be alive in his flesh. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we also believe we shall live with him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dies no more, death has no more dominion over him. For he that dies, he dies into sin once, but he that liveth, he liveth unto God. Your life is now unto God. Likewise, reckon ye yourselves to be dead indeed, indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye to your members, neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness into sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from dead, alive from the dead, and your members unto the instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. If you know We've, we've lived in this flesh all our lives, and we cater to it. It's all we know. But God, through grace, will forgive us for whatever we're involved in. So we just thank God for his word to tell us all the great things he has in store for us. You know, Jesus had promises, blessings, deliverance, and many things for all his people. But you have to trust him to let him to grow into the things that he has for us. And we're going to ask the brothers to come forth so we can do the actual baptism. And we're going to ask baptism. Praise God. We're just getting ready to start the baptism.
just say it, Lord. Amen. I baptize you in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. You are buried with Christ in, in death and you shall rise again in new life. Amen. Amen. What is that? Jesus, Lord. Now, let me thank God for all the great things he does in the midst of Jesus. Let me go back. And you know, wait a minute, just one minute. I, I, I just want to say this. I'm, go ahead. I just want to say this because the Lord would just put on my heart how your dad was baptized and how it was Sister Audrey and I know young Reverend. I don't know who else was going to be baptized. And Brother Tyrone was not going to get baptized that day. He just went to pick his wife and young brother to be baptized. But the Holy Ghost got on him so bad that day about being baptized. He got in that water and got baptized that day. Didn't have a change of clothes, didn't have a towel, didn't have nothing. But you know what? He had the power of Christ in his life. And you know what? He was the evangelist of this church to bless us with the word of God. To bring us all into a place that most people never get into with him. And, and being able to know how real he is and how much he loves us and will watch over us. Yes, Lord, I thank you. And I know yes, this from Saul yes, in the house. Yes, yes, Lord, I thank you. Yes, Lord, I thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And to me, God only gets yes, greater all the time. So I'm just looking and expecting yes, to know. Yes, Lord. God's going to do great and mighty things yes, Lord, I thank you. in this brother's life. Yes, Lord, I thank you. Because that's all God does. Yes, Lord, I thank you. It's great and mighty yes, things in the lives yes, Lord, of the people that yield to him yes, Lord, and trust him. Yes, Lord. And let him lead and guide yes, him into the truth. Come on, brother. Oh, yes, Lord, I thank you. Yes, Lord, I thank you. Come on. Oh, yes, Lord, I thank you. 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 Yes,
Yes, Lord, I thank you. 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 Yes, Lord, I you might be in. How he restore you and restore what the canker worm has destroyed. How you will break the binds of sin and iniquity and all the sorrows and sadness that the enemy has put in your life. It doesn't happen immediately. But if you hold on to Jesus and you keep trusting in Jesus, Jesus will show himself strong in your life. He will be there to do what no one else can do. He said to remember me. Remember what I have done for you. Remember how I have blessed you. Remember how good I have been to you. You know, that's something that we all be partakers of and have what is done for us. And I'm just going to go to 1 Corinthians 11th chapter and I'm going to start with the 28th verse. He said, let a man examine himself. Let this be a time that you look not at your neighbor, not at your husband, not at your wife, not at your children, not at your job, not at all the things that you are surrounded with that has taken your mind off the realities and the deliverances and the power and the love of God, but let us remember him and what he has done for us, what he has brought us out of, what he has kept us from, how he has blessed us, exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask to think. If you got another day of life today, you are blessed. Because you know what? Ain't too many people getting another day of life. A couple Fridays ago, sitting in this church, praising and thanking God for his goodness and his mercy. And a man was murdered right at that corner, shot down, and 
Bullets were flying all over the place. I had my little car parked right in front of the church. A bullet went right through my windshield. Front windshield, right out the back windshield. It was nothing but the grace of God. I was up here talking about the goodness of God that I wasn't sitting in that car. If I would have been sitting in that car, I would not have been here today. But I serve a God that is no respecter of person. He will protect you. He will protect me. He will keep us. He will provide for us. He will fight our enemies and fight wars for us, wars that we cannot see. You know, it tickles me. Man talks about aliens. They believe more in aliens than what Jesus told them about spirits. Oh, aliens from millions of trees and zillions of miles away come to mess with us. Why are they going to mess with us? When they got to be superior to come to us. But Jesus told them about spirits and powers and the wickedness. And I know everybody sitting in here today know they're real. Because man can't be that cruel on his own, the way that they're doing. Murder for no reason. Killing. Un you're just unrandomly, just killing, killing, killing. Doing all kinds of things. Or yeah. uh, just, just so sad. And just so wicked. But God. But God. But God. See, we all got that but God in our lives. That's why we're here today. God had mercy on us. God delivered us. God watched over us. God kept us. God protected us. He's going to keep on doing that. Keep on watching over us. Keep on keeping us and blessing us. We're just kind of waiting for everyone else to come so they can partake of communion. So we just thank God for what he's doing and how he's moving and how he's blessing. I think Gina, you you wanted to say so you might have a testimony real uh, I do, I do. Well, I do. well go right ahead. I, I really wanted to say uh, I was really having trouble with my people now and to express me was the payment so that I could keep my electric and my gas going because it was more of a people. Amen. And you know, you know, the true body of Christ, Jesus himself, will pour out blessings for one reason. You know, I look at, and I'm, I'm going to condemn people, I, I don't do that because, you know, the world is the way it is, and, and, and we all have to grow in Christ. But Jesus will pour out blessings that you can bless everyone around you if you just obey him. You know, when, when they got when they got away from God's word, the Bible, and we can all trace this that are older. When they took the Bible out of the schools, look look look, look at our schools now. They carry AR-15s and kill up each other for no reason. We never had that problem before. The most we have, if we, if we want to get down, we get a fair one, and that would be it. You wouldn't go get no gun to kill nobody. But what are they doing now? They go get, and the saddest part about they don't just kill the one that they want to kill. They kill everybody. 
That's how I know it's not just flesh acting up, but it's spiritual wickedness in high places. That's why you need Jesus. To get some wisdom. Because what's coming on this earth, you, your flesh, ain't no flesh gonna be able to stand it. Ain't no flesh gonna be able to get through this. Only one gonna get you through this is Jesus. I'm gonna tell you how he's gonna get you through. He has something called the catching away. He's gonna catch his people away. When all this break loose, and all this come out, Jesus is going to have his catching away. And he's going to catch away his people and deliver them and keep them. So examine yourself. Look at yourself this, this day. Ask God to have mercy on you. Repent. See, I, you know, I repent more now than I did when I was in the world. When I first started this, this walk. Because God's showing me my thoughts, my desires, the things that are in me that never really get out. I want them out. I want God to get rid of them too. Yeah. Because they're not according to Jesus' will. Jesus wants to bless everybody. Jesus wants to help everybody. Jesus wants to deliver everybody. From all that we are. But you know what he said? I want to go to 1 Corinthians, 11th chapter. And I want to start at the 20th. 